Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dan Geesling coming at you with another fresh podcast episode live from the comfort of my car. It's actually not live, but I'm recording it right now. Uh, it's not a rant. It's almost like a mini rant slash full episode, but I'm just on the road right now. And, and so I wanted to record the podcast for the week and really update with you with a lot of things going on, a lot of random things, but all good things. The the end of 2019 and pumping into 2020 on Twitch has been crazy. You know, there, there's been a couple moments where, like, I haven't necessarily stepped back to smell the roses for a second. But, you know, I've been talking to some friends about it and and just saying, hey, man, like, all this work of, you know, five plus six years streaming on Twitch and figuring it out with the time frame we're in right now, with the moment in time right now with Tarkov, Things have gone really, really well, and I'm doing a lot of extra streams, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but for the most part, you know, and I I just try to take everything with a grain of salt. I, I try not to get too super high or excited, and on the flip side, it makes it way easier not to, like, panic or go in, like, the, the downs. I just try to stay as even keel as possible while being objective about what's going on, and right now in the moment, you know... This is come the, the week after the, the Tarkonis, it's the huge, you know, burst and everything. The past week, you know, the Tarkov, when we were playing Tarkov on Twitch, we're right at, if not over a thousand viewers, which is crazy to think of in terms of being able to hold that. And, and it's just, it's a really cool, I guess, milestone to hit. And to me, I'm just always cautious, right? Because things, I feel like things can sway so much on like YouTube or Twitch, but at the same time, almost, I don't need to talk myself into it, but just let out the thoughts that the way that we do things here isn't like quick fixes or like shortcuts. It's just a building things over time and, and taking time to do it and being patient. You know, I know it's been kind of a fast bump up, but I just look at it as a patient, as a patience thing where I don't necessarily expect things to evaporate overnight. I just don't know what they're going to be like moving forward in terms of, you know, what people like to watch and things of that nature. But right now in the moment, it's kind of come to this this peak of the mountain where things are working really well. And even, you know, and I can't say even, but there was, I had a conversation with a friend and I just said, hey, objectively looking at things, if if I were looking at things short term, which I don't, but if I'm when I stream Tarkov, just taking the past week, for example, when I stream Tarkov, we're at around a thousand viewers, which is amazing, and it's an all-time high for us. And then when we switch to Bloodborne, you know, it tapers off a little bit. I think around seven to seven fifty, which is still amazing. You know, all intents and purposes, would say Dan go all in on Tarkov. And to me, I love the game that much. I could do that, but it's almost like a short-term thing. So, like a short-term, you can short-term grind it out doing that. But I look at doing this long term. So that would be maybe the most efficient and fastest way to continue to grow. But on the flip side, anytime the way I look at it, anytime you take it, and it's not a shortcut by any stretch of the imagination, but a year from now when things change, which they inevitably do, then you know if Tarkov dies off or anything like that, I don't expect Tarkov to die off, but you know then you're just known for playing Tarkov. And that's always the dilemma that I run into. But for me, because I look at everything long-term, I'm still excited to play Bloodborne, even though things, you know, taper off because I don't focus on the numbers at all. It's not, it's not a major concern, but it's definitely something I look at, you know, in this kind of line of things to not look at indicators wouldn't be smart, but I look at them. But the way I look at things long-term is that's how I want the show to go. I want it to be Tarkov or something like that, that we're really excited about, and then a single-player experience. And I think to deviate from that long-term, I know is a big mistake, and it's not the direction that I want to take the show. I know the direction of the show, and it's continuing to do that, even in the face of, like, yeah, I don't want to say a short-term loss, because that's not the best way to say it, but just to be able to do that and have the opportunity to kind of stay flexible in that is what I want for the show, and, and I think that's what people enjoy, right? Because there's people that enjoy watching Tarkov, there's people that enjoy watching Bloodborne, and there's some that enjoy watching both. But I, I don't know. That's just – that's to me, is the permanent direction of the show. It's never going to be just one game. It's just pretty amazing right now to be in a time where the one game that we've been playing for two years is now you know, really, really popular on Twitch. 
so with that kind of going on, I've been really and in, in in coagulation with things going on in the new year. I've been really dialed in with my time, meaning that I'm protecting my time at night for the next morning, especially during the week. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of my 2020 objectives or goals, but to be able to do that, to be able to wake up at five and then work out and then start the show early, it's a hundred percent doable. So then we get longer shows and then a chance of more shows depending on what's going on. So we're coming, I'm recording this on a Sunday and I just, I had a surprise stream. And so Anytime I get a chunk of time that's within kind of my working calendar, so not like away from family or friend time or anything like that, but within that calendar, if there's free time, I'm going to try and squeeze that and be as efficient as I can around that time so I can throw in an additional stream. Because a lot of people came in on Sunday today. There was, you know, an, for context, another thousand viewers and the community. Just, I, I said it on the show. I have no expectations, but that always – that surprises me. So to do a surprise stream like that, a lot of people said, hey, Dan, this Sunday is going to be a new thing now. And my thing is I always want to deliver what I say I'm going to deliver. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and anytime I can squeeze in extras, I am 100% going to do that. But I just, you know, I can't commit to like Sundays all the time and things like that. So I don't, but if I can do it as an extra, I will. And so I want to continue to do things like that. And, and um, but it's funny because When something's working and you know it's working and you're having fun and the community's having fun, all of a sudden I've just become way more efficient in everything else that I'm doing in terms of not wasting time, in terms of being super productive because I just know any time I waste is kind of taking away from an opportunity to do a show, which ultimately is what I really, 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 really enjoy doing. And uh, it's just so much fun and uh, I always feel grateful for the opportunity and the community backing to be able to do that so i don't know and i say this selfish is the only word i can think of but it's maybe not applicable but when i kind of know that like i'm internally aware that this is what i need to be doing right now and this is what i want to be doing and if i can double down and stream on a day maybe stream a little bit longer when i'm done with the stream kind of having checking that internal box would be like wow you got to do what you really wanted to do today I become way better in every aspect of everything else, meaning that, like, I don't know, like, I'm more, I don't know, I'm just like, I feel like I'm better everywhere else once you kind of check the box of what you need to do. I guess that's in my outside life. Like, when I'm, when I know I put in a good show and it was fun, like, you know, everything becomes a lot easier outside of that. You're happier and things like that. And it's not directly correlated into, like, having a great show, meaning that, you know, we had an insane Tarkov run, but just the feeling that you kind of put in a hard day's work on something you're really passionate about, you know, just internally, it just makes you feel really good. I don't have another way to, to explain that. Um, so I hope, I, I hope I'm not losing you on that one. Outside of that, you know, I'm looking, I've been working on something. Well, with, I can't say too much, but I've been working on something. Hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to announce it, but I think it'll help expand things even future in the, even more in the future where there are some people saying, Dan, are you full time? And no, you know, in terms of on Twitch and YouTube, but the needle is moving that way. I don't know if it'll ever continue to, I don't know if it'll ever go all the way there because I like, you know, my real life business that I run and things like that. So, but it's just, things are just shifting in that way. And it, and it's really an exciting time for that. I'm excited to hopefully talk more about them in the future. Other kind of random thing that happened, it was late, I think Friday or Saturday night, I got a, a, a envelope delivered uh, to my office and it had like unity on it. So I, you know, it's like a funny little meme and I used uh, my iPhone. I think I must use the highlighter instead of the pen to kind of mark out the address. And I tweeted it out. And I thought what was really cool is I had a ton of messages on Discord, on Twitter DM. Uh, there was another place that I got a message through the text messaging. A bunch of people reached out and said, hey, Dan, delete that tweet. You can see the address in it. And it just kind of took me by shock. I had zero I had zero concern about that, meaning like I, I don't want to encourage that. So I deleted it. But I was just really taken aback by how many people in the community and, and on so many different platforms, I think I got an Instagram DM about it. 
I just really appreciated it. It's, it's, it was kind of like, it's not kind of like, it's like people are looking out for you. <laughs> you know, it was just, I just really appreciate this. You know, some may look at it as a small gesture and, you know, and a, clearly a foolish mistake on my end, but man, I was just, just really surprised in, in a great way that, you know, that many people are like, Hey, you know, kind of looking out in that regard. So that was kind of a cool thing that happened uh, this past week in terms of something going from could be like really bad to was really a, a positive experience. That's what I'll remember about <laughs> accidentally leaking that online. And then the, the battle that I fight right now with all this extra time, you know, I say battle, you know, with, with everything to do with gaming is that the time, the extra time that I'm putting into Twitch is time that I would normally put into YouTube. So it's really developing a plan for YouTube. And in my head, this is the plan I'm executing is that I feel like I can put an hour a day into YouTube, meaning that two 30 minute esque videos a day. I think that that's something I know I can maintain. And now it's just mapping that out and sticking to it. So tomorrow or today, which is Monday, the day of the national championship game, I did some, I'm going to do like a lot of off the wall stuff. And I think partly some of that is inspired by Ryan Gary, Northern line. Who's doing a lot of cool stuff with this channel. I really like that. We, you know, I was, we kind of talk in the private, private end. And, you know, I've, I've said some things publicly about, you know, how he's pushed me inadvertently to, to, to continue to make better videos and, and just everything, you know, his work ethic. And I, I, the term I use, and I, I, I sent it to him on the back channel a few times, is iron sharpens iron. I think when you're around people that have similar goals and push really hard, I think it's it just rubs off on you. And so there's a NCAA one-off football episode on the channel. It should be at 8 a.m. Uh, having to do with the national championship game. And, you know, it's not going to continue. It's not a series or anything like that. But I just want to continue to do fun stuff like that. I'm going to do some more first look at. There's a first look at video coming out on Tuesday. And then just finding the right balance between that Tarkov and roguelikes. Because roguelikes, to me, are, are outside of Tarkov and outside of Souls games. That's the next genre in the chamber or the next style of game that I really, 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 really enjoy. And I think ultimately when you create content or when you do anything, when you really enjoy something or it fires you up, it has the same effect on other people or, or it's, it, you know, it's easily seen. Like, so this, this first look at video I did for Tuesday, it's a platformer and, you know, about halfway through, I'm like, you know, I, I get it. I, I get what the game's about. And then at the end, I just hit my honest feelings. I said, Hey, you know, this is a free game. And, you know, you can't beat the price, but I know I wouldn't play it again. And it doesn't mean it's a bad game, but just that's the first time, you know, I always try to, to spin things in a positive way. Like, I don't want to be negative. And, you know, that's so I always try to find a way to say something with a grain of salt to make it positive. Do I think it's probably a good game? Yeah. But am I going to play it? No. And that's, you know, so I just want to be continue to be transparent and honest about games that I like and don't like, which I'll always do. But just make sure to do it in a way. That is, that is with, with everything else we do, just keeping things like, you know, positive and on the up and up. And so I think I kind of surprised myself at the end of that video because I never, I guess, been that blunt about, you know, whether or not I'm going to play a game. Well, let's play a game that isn't inherently like meme or really bad. Like if you see a really bad game and you're playing it and having fun with it, that's one thing. But, you know, it's a, it was a, it's a cool game. Maybe it just wasn't for me. So I don't know. I, the way I closed out the video, I was just kind of ended. I'm like, man. I don't think I've ever done that before. So just continue to push the envelope on YouTube in that regard. And really, I think just be okay with the seven hours dedicated to YouTube and then roll with that and, and, and take it from there. Because I think that's right now, that's kind of the, the sweet spot for how things are going right now and, and what I'm able to do. So outside of that, you know, I, to me, I, I guess the the one thing that, if if you're listening to this right now, that maybe I, I would hope that you could take away from what I'm trying to convey in this in these update podcasts is that the biggest thing I learned this week is is when you want to do something, you've identified internally something you really enjoy and it starts to work or you, you really start to, to understand it and know that it's working and it's the right thing for you to do. It's funny how all the other things 
kind of get way more efficient or you just naturally, I'm not doing a ton different. I'm planning my days ahead of time, which has been really huge. And really probably one of the biggest physical things I'm doing different is taking 10 minutes every night, usually sometimes in bed, sometimes before, but just planning out, Hey, here's the things I need to get done. Here's my rough timeline. Wake up at five workout. Go to the office when I go to the office, bang out these couple of things from my real life, quote unquote, real life business, and then start the stream early. And so that's really helped. But just it's funny how naturally when you're doing something that you're passionate about, all the other stuff that you still have to do that you may not want to do that normally takes way longer becomes way shorter because you're just trying to get everything done as fast as possible so you can do what you want to do or what you're passionate about. So. I don't know. I'm just really fired up and a little, you know, surprised about how 2020 started off. And uh, another kind of weird flex is that TikTok is is going really well. I think we had another one, another video that just crossed 300,000 views. It, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like everything right now, I don't want to say everything that we touch is working, but everything right now is working really well. So to be able to to kind of share that with you and and I always like to maybe take a step back and say, well, why is that? You know, I feel like in particular with TikTok, I feel, you know, we spent a month, six weeks just kind of figuring out how to work it and having some videos that were okay, some that were good, but just learning, like putting in the work to see, all right, this is what a good TikTok video looks like and feels like. And then with Tarkov, putting in two years of playing the game and and getting better at live streaming and working on production value and, and and the entertainment factor and the, and the lulls in Tarkov, making them not lulls, making them fun segments, you know, so it's not like it just all happened overnight, but it just feels like all the work that's been culminating is now, you know, really just kind of hit, hit at the tipping point when things are a lot of fun and a lot of things are working. So I'm just really grateful right now to be in that spot, but also really, like I said earlier in the podcast, I'm not looking around and smelling the roses. I'm just kind of doubling down and, and just, you know, working as hard as I can, as much as I can during this time period, because you never know what happens. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys have a great one. Uh, dial in, whether you're you're tuned in from Skokie, Illinois, through Pot Belly Pig, maybe you're in transit, maybe you're in school, maybe you're at work, maybe you're at home with the kids. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys next week. Later.